Hi everybody, welcome back to my studio. I'm Nettie Kay. If you were with me last time, you'll recall that we talked about the power of color in enhancing our mood and in helping us to develop a little bit of energy just from a visual standpoint. We talked about the color yellow primarily and how the yellow is the uh, representation of sunshine and happiness and it's a symbolic color, but yes, whenever we see yellow flowers, yellow daisies, maybe not yellow dandelions, but we, we find that we are feeling a little bit happier, at least I am, okay. And so I also talked a little bit about um, purple and uh, light blue, which is the color of the sky. And so now, today I would like to uh, continue with our little discussion on how to enhance your mood, especially as an artist, uh, by getting off the sofa and standing up this time for painting. When you're sitting down and painting, it's very difficult to get any kind of a movement in your art and you tend to uh, draw the lines in and then fill it in with paint. Well, that just isn't a very painterly approach in order to create an artistic expression. Uh, it may be comfortable for you and that may be, you may be completely happy with that technique, but if you are looking to be a little bit looser in your rendering, uh, you may want to stand up and just let it go loose. Yes, so that's what we're going to do today. I photographed the uh, daffodils the last time we met because daffodils are very, very frail and they always uh, fade faster than you can paint them. So I took them out on the back porch when it was sunset and the sun was coming at one direction so that I had a nice shadow and sunlight on uh, these flowers and so then I printed them up three three copies and I did um, this is the the photograph of the the daffodils that I did that's the um, the actual photograph and then I did one in black and white so that I could kind of evaluate the tonal values and then I did a little artistic move on the Photoshop and uh, um, figured out a little bit more of the detail by doing that I also took a ballpoint pen and I went around all of the shapes and uh, it's not to trace them on or anything like that. Goodness knows we don't need to do that. But it isolates the shapes so that I can really get an idea of what these flowers really look like. Because sometimes you look at a flower and you think, oh my gosh, it's so complicated. Uh, I'll never be able to paint that. I don't know what, I can't even tell what it looks like. I can't, the bookmark in my mind just isn't working. Uh, it just seems to be falling out and I can't remember what page I'm on, you know. So this is a way of doing this. Each time I do one of my giant flowers especially, I will photograph them, I'll, I'll dissect them into tonal values, and then I will trace around and, and um, isolate each one of the shapes with either a red pen or a blue pen, and then I know a little bit better uh, how I'm going to approach this when I go to hit the canvas. All right, so now today I've got on my palette, I've got um, some cadmium yellow light mixed down with some white. So I've got each of these three yellows, cadmium yellow light, Hansa yellow deep, and Indian yellow, which is a transparent color. In order to make it not so transparent, I've added uh, several layers of white in about three tonal values. So it's a little bit of the straight color a little bit of white and a little more white. So I have uh, each one of those. And uh, then I've also got some magenta, some uh, quinacridone magenta, a little bit of dioxazine purple, uh, some teals and some, you know, turquoise, and of course a lot of white. So let's get going and I'm gonna show you how to at least paint one flower. I don't wanna get too carried away and paint the whole bouquet, we'll be here all day. So. Uh, but I, I want to emphasize that this, at this point, we are going to add color to energy in the strokes and not be fussing and tracing, okay, on this particular style of painting. Cut loose. Don't worry about how it's going to turn out. Let's get going. All right. Now, I'm going to get uh, my, uh, this is a number uh, 10 filbert brush, and I'm going to wipe that nice and clean. We're going to start out with a light color this time rather than uh, the usual when you're painting in in oils you normally would um, well, a lot of people do start with the darks move up to the lights but this time I'd like to experiment a little bit and go backwards and start with the lights because you the lights need to go down uh, in order to keep it nice and um, uncontaminated okay so if I put the lights on if I put the darks on first everything's going to mix in with that dark and it's just going to get muddy 
And so I want to try this this time uh, with the lights first. Quit talking, lady, and get to painting. Okay, all right. Okay, I think I, my favorite one, I'm just going to use the regular photo since I've already kind of done all the studies of the, the other ones. And I'm going to uh, put this flower, let me see where I want to put it. I'm going to put it like this. Uh, I'm going to start slightly off center. I don't want it right in the middle. And I'm going to give this a little uh, super light, light lemony yellow with some white and a little bit of medium because I want these strokes to go nice and, and fast. And I'm going to kind of create this, this uh, wiggly thing down here at the bottom. This is the bottom part of the cone. And it's, it's kind of facing towards us a little bit. So we'll start with that. And if we get anywhere else, we'll, we'll try to do that as well. We'll see how far we can go. And then I'm going to create this uh, kind of weird ellipse. This is just the outside of the flower. And then uh, we'll go, let's see, I'll put, kind of bring that in just a little bit. And then I want to get maybe just a slightly different color for the, the one right behind it. So I'm going to grab some of the uh, Hansa yellow with white. And we're going to come up here like this so that you can see the difference. And it's just slightly different. And then I'm going to bring it up and we'll go like this. And so this is this petal right here. And then I have, uh, let's see, this is going to come out just a little bit more right there. A little bit more, a little bit. I'm already adjusting. I want to put it, get it in there as fast as I can. This has got a shorter petal there. It has a little petal that kind of comes out right like this. There we go, like that. And then one that comes down and aims about this way. So I think about it as a clock sometimes and I think, okay, I got to put this one at about 530, pointing at 530 like that. A little more medium on there and then we'll come out here. This one is pointing at about seven and it's a little skinnier. So I'm talking my way through it saying, okay, is that skinnier? Is it fatter? And uh, we're going to put that like that. And there's the basic shape of this. And then this uh, petal right here comes in behind this one a little bit. So I'm going to pull that out and it also goes in behind this one. Okay, so that's this one's forward. These are kind of behind. Now, how do I make this look like it's going behind? Well, I'm going to make this a little bit darker underneath this petal right here. Okay, plus I overlap it. So there's that, and then uh, let's see, this one is going to have a little stem that kind of comes down like this. So let's just focus on this flower, all right? Because I know a lot of you guys are just going, well, how do I do it? Well, let's see. Now I'm going to think about uh, what is darker and what is lighter. All right, so now this right here is sticking out beyond this right here. So now I'm going to go in with a little bit of the Indian yellow, which is darker than the little rim, like that. And you need to learn how to not try to match the photo, but get the effect that you want and say, I want this to stick out more, so I might have to make the behind petal even darker than it really is. Okay, so now you can see that is beginning to stand out like that. And then you can shape it with that negative shape. Then I'm going to come in like this with that wonderful Indian yellow and I'm going to begin dragging inward a little bit slightly darker value into where I think the center is, which is slightly lower than the actual center because of the angle of the flower. And we're going to drag it in like this or drag it up, but don't go all the way out. You don't want to lose that light right there like that. Okay, so it's, it's a cone and it goes down in like this, and then don't lose track of what the actual picture is telling you. And so then we have it kind of coming like that. And now I'm going to go back in with that really light yellow again. Uh, actually, I'm going to add some Hansa yellow with um, some more white, and we're going to make this a little bit thicker right there. And you can really see how this begins to kind of jump out. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm adding more paint, okay? So I'm making it a little bit thicker. Anything that kind of comes forward could be a little bit thicker than the stuff that goes back. The things that go back into space should be just a little bit thinner. This is even too thick right in here, but uh, I want this to kind of come out 
right like that. So I'm looking for these lighter areas as it comes forward. And then this petal down in here, of course, is dark as well. So let's uh, wipe off our brush and put in some darker uh, value down under here. I'm going to work my way around and I'm going to come underneath this one and pull it out this way. Okay, so I'm just using that um, uh, Indian yellow, basically, which is very transparent. So you have to kind of, well, our flowers are transparent. So we, want to, we don't want to lose that transparency. Do we? we want it to have it kind of transparent, but we also want it to make a statement. So uh, let's see, this uh, needs to go back up into that lighter color right in here as the light hits. The strongest part right here is this area that is catching the light right like that. Okay, so let's get that structure just right. So I'm going to peel that like that. So I'm not, you know, I'm not tracing the flowers on. I'm just painting them as I go and trying to see if I can do it nice and loose. That might frustrate uh, you guys to no end. I'm going to put a little part right here that appears to be kind of folding out. And uh, let's see, this one kind of, kind of peels over a little bit. So I'm going to just put that right like that. So a little bit of light here, a little bit of light there, a little light coming down on that petal there. So I'm looking for the light right now. And I know that this part is uh, out and this part is sort of coming out right here into the light. And I'm gonna get a little bit more of an orangish light right here. So let's get that into an orange light right like that. And this is actually really dark over here. Let's see, let's, let's keep going here with our light to start with. Okay, ah, I'm jumping. Okay, so now up in here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get where the light is. I'm going to look for the lights in my reference. And you can do this from life if you're really fast. Um, but it's, I think it sometimes helps to work flowers from, from your photos because it's kind of hard to isolate things, isn't it? It's hard to isolate shapes and say, what am I really looking at? Okay, so this petal down here is going to go into a little bit of a darker color and a darker tone. So I'm going to begin by putting in a little bit of, oh, I like that. Okay, this is just the uh, Indian yellow. I think I like that. I'm going to start with the Indian yellow underneath. Pull that out. Remember, these have got, you know, little ridges and stuff too. We'll get those in a little bit later, but... I'm going to pull that. I like that. And then this one is nice and dark right here. I might, I'm going to darken it even more. So you'll see how I'm going to do it. But I'm going to darken this a little bit more as we go. But I want to start out with a nice fresh uh, color of um, the Indian yellow, which is that transparent color like that. And then this over here, I've got that petal. I've got this petal, which is behind. I'm going to go in with that dark value of the Indian yellow and we'll pull this down kind of behind here and I'm going to even darken it more. You're going to be a little bit shocked. I hope it works. Yeah, I do. Okay, now this one needs a little bit of an orangish color so I'm going to take my uh, Indian yellow with a tiny touch of, uh, what have I got here, of uh, cadmium red light and so I'm now going to uh, come in over on this side and uh, give it just a little bit of an orange. I don't know why I'm doing it, but I think it needs it. And then we'll put in a little bit like this. Okay, a little bit of that orange color. I like that a lot. We'll give it a little more interesting, interesting color. Okay, so now I'm going to add some quinacridone magenta, which is a reddish purple into uh, the center of the flower to start with down in here and we're going to set this off a little bit so i've got this reddish color you can see how that just bounces the uh the white or the light part of the the flower there and i'm i'm taking that as kind of my negative shape and uh, i'm realizing that the stalk of this is going to come down like this and then it's, uh, it's going to pull like that. And then uh, I might even take a, a Q-tip and eliminate the uh, paint around so that I can put a nice 
uh, stamen in without having to have it interfere with a bunch of other paint. So you know you can always do that. And then I've got that uh, on my on my brush at this stage. I want this to pop out. This is really kind of my focus area right here. So I'm going to push that um, that purple, that magenta up in here, and and kind of make that the shadow is in magenta. You can do the shadows in kind of a in, you know yellow ochre or raw sienna, but I tend to like to make them in the complementary color of purple. So I'm adding a little bit of our purple over here as well. One of the other ways that I will approach a yellow flower, since uh, yellow is a very transparent color and it sometimes takes me five layers of the color uh, in order to get it. So each color will take a couple of days to dry and it just takes a long time. And I want to make this just even darker there. Uh, I will do a, um, an underpainting in acrylic, allow that to dry, and then do a glazing in oil over the top. And that's a, a wonderful way of doing it. Maybe we'll have to show you how to do that at some point too. Okay, so that's that's how this is working. I'm going to go back in with a little bit more of the um, quinacridone violet. I'm going to add that to some orange. Okay, and under here we're going to get this nice and intense. There's a, it's almost you can see the reddishness of that. You know that's not really the color that I see, but it's the color that I want. Okay. We paint what we want to see. We don't paint what we're actually seeing. We want we paint what we want to see. So uh, let's push this in like this. A little bit more of that kind of shadowy burgundy color mixed with a little bit of Indian yellow. And then uh, this has got a shadow part that's a little bit under like this. Uh, and then I'll just kind of pull a few strokes like that. Again, I would do this over, I would do this in layers for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, and then there's a shadow that kind of comes under that. It's kind of peeling over a little bit, a little bit of a shadow there. And uh, now I'm going to come up here and I've got a shadow behind this. So I, again, I'm, I'm pulling out that, that beautiful, um, you know, kind of lacy curl that goes out by by darkening up what's behind it. So what I would normally do, everybody, I'm going to put that nice dark in there too. The dark emphasizes the light. This is what we need to learn when we're in the middle of a pandemic, is that when we go through rough times, often uh, what happens is the good times really are much more appreciated, aren't they? So that means when we put in a dark, our light uh, really uh, shines forth a little bit more. Now I'm going to take a Q-tip and I'm going to take a nice clean Q-tip and I'm going to come over here and take some of the paint down so that I can make it nice and clean. And I'm going to streak that down like this so that I can put in a nice orangey yellow stamen in there. Okay, so I've got Cadmium, uh, now what is this one? This is the Hansa Yellow with a little bit of orange on it. And I'm going to just put in a little bit of a stamen like that. Okay, same thing right in this leaf right here. I'm realizing that it's, I want to put in a little bit of a light. So I'm going to just take, ooh, I'm going to take my little paper towel and wipe that paint out a little bit so that I can put something a little lighter on there. So I'll put in just a nice light color as it, or light, light tonal value as I um, come up and say, okay, well, the light's going to hit like this. And then I also want to put in just a little bit more of that light on top of the, the stamen right there. Okay, now I'm going to put just a little bit of a, a light coming there as well, and then right down like this. This is super loose, super loose. And then I want to, I do want, this one here has got a lot of light coming out. So let's get some of that light going. And get that like that. Let's get some straight Hansa yellow. And pull that in like this so that it feels like there's sunlight. Like that. 
towards the center. And then one more round of super light yellow right in this area right here. Hello. Okay, well, I hope this is kind of helping you kind of figure out how to approach things just a little bit. I want to get in just a little bit into this, the dark side of this flower, because this is uh, uh, obviously the sun's coming this direction, and then this is in a little bit of shadow, but uh, it's transparent. So you see just a little bit of that, that kind of transparent feel. So now I'm going to drag some of that in so it doesn't look like there's just pieces. Let's get that orange again right in here. I don't want it to look like it's got a big purple hole in it. No. And then we'll just do a few more of these um, kind of uh, little stripes and strokes and ridges. A little more of that kind of orangishness right here to kind of warm it up. You can get into all kinds of crazy detail from here, but if you start out nice and loose, it gives you a really good good base from which to work like that. I've got this really kind of messed up right here, so I'm going to take a Q-tip and, uh, and clean that up. See that? I can clean it up with a Q-tip or I can come around and I can uh, paint around the outside of it with a darker color and reshape that like that. Okay, now I want to do one more level of, of depth right in here, so I'm taking some orange and some dark uh, violet, and we're going to put that just like that. So I can keep pushing and pulling, you guys. Keep pushing, keep pulling, and then uh, you can just do it as much as you like until you're happy. Make that just a little bit darker. You can see at the more I put that darker value behind that light, the more it stands out. Let's go one level more. Woo, that's so pretty. And then, of course, you can go into the stems and do all that. I'm going to just take a little bit of uh, dark uh, teal. We'll make a nice stem right there with the um, phthalo teal. And I'm going to add a little bit of my lemony yellow to that. And, uh, you know, a lot of these stems are actually more in a bluish color. So, you know, you can get technical with it if you want. So let's do a little bit of a, a kind of a frosty Frosty blue right on the edge like that. That's interesting. All right, well, I hope you learned something today about using wonderful bright colors and keeping it nice and loose. So uh, don't forget to try, if you can, to stand up, put on some jazzy music, and paint something in a little bit more of a loose style. If you don't like it after you've painted it, you can always wipe it off, all right? It's not precious, it's just paint, all right? Oh, I think I need to make a t-shirt out of that. Anyway, next time we meet, we are going to continue with our uh, movement in color series and how to lift our mood during the pandemic. And the next time we meet, we're going to be painting a really fat cat who's sitting kind of on a sofa or a beanbag chair, and we're going to paint it in really bright uh, expressionistic colors. Don't panic. Uh, I know a lot of you guys love the realism, but this is going to be a lot of fun. So. Stay tuned, and I will see you again next time. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. Bye-bye for now.